Hello everyone and welcome to a video on the single stage to orbit space plane Skylon in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. As you can see I've tried to make a replica that is as close to the real thing as possible and I would like to verify the numbers with you. Uh, first of all we have a dry mass of 53.359 tons. What I looked up said that it was supposed to be 53.5 with some margin. So that was what they said and that's what I've got. Uh, the front tank has liquid hydrogen here, and we've got a cryogenic tank with 86% utilization. And here we have another tank that is mixed oxygen-hydrogen. Technically, oxygen would be in the back of this one. And I'm just going to fill her up again. Uh, but it's a balloon cryo tank. That's the only way I could get it light enough. And we know the dry mass, so I had to use this kind of tank, otherwise it wouldn't be to spec. And 86% utilization here. Uh, the diameter is 6.2 meters. I read on Wikipedia that it was supposed to be 6.3. So, well, I'm going to call that close enough. We're going to be encountering quite a lot of drag as it is, and I'll show you precisely how much as we fly. This one's just liquid oxygen, and this is uh, one of the adapter pieces. Uh, I have a mod that allows me to paint stock pieces. This is a stock piece that's been resized for uh, realism overhaul. And I should mention, of course, this is all in real solar system, realism overhaul. Otherwise, we wouldn't have real fuels. I, well, I mean, we could have real fuels without those, but still. That's the whole point, really. Uh, getting into Earth orbit, not Kerbin orbit. Kerbin orbit's a little bit easier on the SSTOs. And uh, here we have another uh, similar tank, oxygen as well. And I had to do some configuring there, too, to allow me to turn this into a cryogenic tank. By default, in realism overhaul, this can only be... A fuselage tank. Well, I changed that. So, so now, so now it can be a cryogenic tank or whatever other tank I happen to want it to be, uh, because otherwise we can't make replicas. Uh, oh, incidentally, Skylon does taper in on the width, and so the use of these cargo bays, the Mark III cargo bay, is the best thing because it actually does sort of have uh, lines like this instead of being. Uh, you know, uh, the same width all throughout, but it does have the same height. It keeps a consistent height. So, yeah, that's why these were the right part for that. We do not have any payload right now, and that's because right now the margins are rather tight. And I'll get your suggestions on how to help that situation. This is another liquid hydrogen tank, balloon cryo 86%. And there's yet another liquid hydrogen tank. This one doesn't have any utilization option. And uh, we also have a little tiny bit here, and that's for the OMS engines, as uh, actually, uh, the RCS here. And then uh, they have a more powerful OMS system, 40 kilonewtons. I've just put one kilonewton thrusters that burn hydrogen and oxygen for now. Um, it's got to be tough enough as it is. And it won't make much of a difference. I'll just have to find some engine that would fit there, or pair of engines that would fit there that uh, would serve as a good OMS engine without, you know, b burning off at the tail or something. Anyway, so uh, we are currently filled. These are not actual tanks that I'm using. They're just for structural purposes to make that curve that is characteristic to the Skylon engine pylons. And these are, of course, uh, Sabre engines from B9 Aerospace. And they are, as far as I know, configured properly. I did reduce the mass of them in order to give the dry mass of this vehicle the proper size, again, that was too heavy otherwise. And uh, yeah, uh, there is better protection on these tanks than usual for procedural tanks. I made special tanks to make sure we have heat protection. And same with the wings. Um, the, this part, the pre-cooler and this engine are all from B9 Aerospace. And they are configured by advanced jet engines. I tried to tweak the advanced jet engines thing, but that did not work out at all, so I just restored them to the default numbers. It seems like the Sabre engine needs better performance at sea level while in air breathing mode, but I couldn't figure out how to get that, so better not mess with that. And so I'm just going with whatever it had. And we'll see how that works out. 307 tons, they say that uh, it's supposed to carry 250 tons of fuel altogether. And if you add that to the 53.5 ton dry mass, you get 303.5 tons. So we're carrying a little bit of extra fuel right now. And let's see how that works. 
Now I haven't actually tested this particular version of it. I did test one that was slimmer. Actually, uh, this has 6.2 meters as the maximum diameter of the fuselage. I tested one with 5.6, so it had less drag. But that wasn't correct, but I, I got to orbit, barely. This is going to have more drag, and it has no upside. So, possibly this is not actually going to make it to orbit. Now, we would like some information up so that you can see. First of all, the information on the Sabre engines as they burn and also fair mirror space. Uh, we won't need smart ASS. I'll have the flight data on this side. And it's rolling backwards, so let's uh, get things started. Throw up, uh, fly-by-wire enabled, and here we go. There's no point putting the brakes while the engines spool up because these engines benefit from air coming in, uh, uh, you know, at a faster rate. So, trying to run them at a standstill is just going to waste fuel. Based on my experience, rotation speed with this thing is like 130 meters per second, and liftoff speed is something like 150. Uh, flaps might help, but not a whole lot. And, oh, oh, we got off the ground before 140. Gotta have to remember to not straight scrape the tail it's a really long vehicle and we are not at the right heading right now we are currently taking off from the shuttle runway which is not uh, headed 90 it performs very well it actually is very pleasant to fly which was a complete surprise to me now we'll pick up some speed here but we really just want to get up as quickly as possible because of the drag. So in theory this is supposed to be able to carry a 15 ton payload but given the kind of margins I have trying to get to orbit I, I don't see it. So partly I'm wondering what exactly am I doing wrong? Is it something misconfigured with the engines? Now on the sources that I can find it, it sometimes gives a specific impulse similar to a number we have here, but the sources from reaction engines themselves, the or is it reaction systems, I keep forgetting. Anyway, uh, they had 4,000 ISP in air breathing mode. Reaction engines limited it is. So we're obviously not getting 4,000 right now, so that might be part of the problem. The question is whether Advanced Jet Engines understands that we're burning hydrogen rather than kerosene. Normally it's used to kerosene burning or jet fuel burning engines. Hydrogen is a different sort of situation. But I don't know whether it is or is not handling that properly. It'd be similar to the difference between burning kerosene and oxygen and burning hydrogen and oxygen, right? So we'd expect the same sort of gap. You expect from a kerosene oxygen engine at sea level maybe 300 ISP and from a hydrolox maybe 400, something like that. Maybe more along the lines of 360, 380 at sea level. Uh, similarly uh, with the jet engines you get 3200 and with this you expect something more like 4000 maybe. We do guzzle a lot of the hydrogen, as you can see it's going by real fast, but as far as the mass is concerned, the hydrogen isn't very much mass. It's taking up a lot of space, but it's not much of the mass of the vehicle. Most of it is the liquid oxygen. Now at this point, we do reach a specific impulse of 4,000, but, well, well, we'll go with it as it is. We're a little bit low on thrust right now. Actually, these engines are capable of 2,000 kilonewtons, so this is really low on thrust. But that's because we're going relatively slow. I really need to pick up speed here. But it's tough. I mean, we are facing severe drag. 389 kilonewtons is a lot of drag. And that's partly why I didn't want to go with the wider body. Okay, we are beyond Mach 3, finally. 
gonna try and bring it up to 28 kilometers before switching to rocket mode and we'll see if we can. It's supposed to be going Mach 5 at 28 kilometers, but I don't know if that's gonna happen with this one. I think we're carrying way too much liquid hydrogen, I mean liquid oxygen for our liquid hydrogen, uh, either that or I, I just need to be able to get up here quicker. Yeah, it's getting difficult to coax it. I think the flight profile was a little bit iffy, but let's see what we can do in rocket mode now. I think uh, on the next flight we'll just cut down how much liquid oxygen we are carrying. Get down to that 300 ton level that we're supposed to be at. So right now you can see they're outputting 1958 kilonewtons with uh, ISP of 459.7. That's reasonable uh, for Hydrolox at uh, high altitude, uh, near vacuum, which we are but we very clearly do not have enough delta-v to make orbit. Okay, so we're more than a thousand meters per second shy of orbit, but that's partly because we're carrying 23 tons of extra oxygen right now. Uh, let me try and dump that oxygen and try again. Um, other than that, we might have to go back to the slimmer body version so that we don't encounter as much drag. Okay, well this time we're lighter than we should be, carrying much less oxygen, and we'll see whether that helps us. We're at 292 tons. So with our luck we're probably going to end up with too much hydrogen this time, but that's not as bad as too much oxygen though. Maybe I can just keep my pitch somewhat consistent somehow, that I do a sort of set pitch kind of thing. Just gotta make sure not to script the tail. But we are off. For now I'll keep it to 15 degrees. Okay, now at 10 kilometers, I'm going to go for 10 degrees. See if that's good. The drag is sure increasing faster than our thrust is, which is not good. Okay, well, I have to pitch down here approaching 14 kilometers let's say 4 degrees and see how that goes for us okay back to 10 degrees oh, but the thrust is going down let me not have the thrust go down the thrust is still going up there the thrust is inching up at 6 degrees okay I'll take that Okay, well I'm trying to push it to high velocity this time, even though we're obviously experiencing some interesting effects on the nose. But we really can't go much beyond Mach 5, otherwise the engines explode, so that's a hard limit. Okay, looking to switch to closed cycle at 28 kilometers and Mach 5, so, well, this time we're doing better. The, note the thrusts drop off here, and the drag isn't quite matching, so there is a limit here. Uh, we have to go down now in order to gain speed. I think we should switch over now. Oh, looking good. I mean, we need 6,000 to make orbit, basically. Though, we need to go up a little bit as well, so this looks good, though. Well, let's keep it to two G's, perhaps. Technically, I suppose I should coast to Apoapsis at this point. Which we can do. 
There's no ignition limit on the Sabre right now. But I'll have to figure out how to do it all in one burn and everything. But the apoapsis was definitely getting out of hand there. Okay, we are in orbit. 209 meters per second left. So, yeah. Well, I guess we'll see how it comes back down. Let's shut down these. Though they're more efficient probably than the 1 kN thrusters. I don't have a reaction wheel in here. We'll do the usual thing and deorbit around Australia. But I doubt this is going to handle the whole deorbit thing very well. I don't think our RCS ports are going to have enough authority to hold our pitch up. I'm using them for the deorbit burn right now and it's taking a while. Well, I'm still trying to lower my periapsis using the RCS, but we're going to be encountering the atmosphere soon. I think I'll go to 40 kilometers and see what happens. See what explodes first, you know. Okay. And we'll have a pitch of 40, which is shuttle standard. Don't know if that's what Skylon would have. But we have to go with something. It's um, it's not really doing it, is it? Oh, uh, maybe the no, the flyby wire was off. <laughs> that uh, Smarty SS has no excuse. Come on, Smarty SS. Okay, well we've entered the atmosphere, and the first thing that becomes apparent is we have a very persistent yaw going on here. And I don't know why. Keep in mind, we have no fuel outboard. All the fuel is in the center line, so there shouldn't be any imbalance in the vehicle. Yep, not entirely sure what it's up to. Okay, we are at 100 kilometers. There's a bit of shimmering here. Hopefully, it'll resolve itself. And things still look fine, but it's not like we've hit the tough part of the atmosphere yet. We are approaching Hawaii here. I noticed, though, that we're already using some pitch here. So that's not a good sign. Well, there are signs of overheating, at least as far as reddened tanks are concerned. And half our pitch authority is being used. Okay, 80 kilometers still holding strong. Decelerating fine. About two-thirds of our pitch authority, though. Fuel consumption is not bad. But that's probably because our RCS thrusters are a bit underpowered. Oh, it just went to max pitch. And it looks like it actually wants to nose up rather than nose down. That's a problem. Nose down is a lot better actually. Yep, wants to flip around. I mean in this case all the parts are heat shielded in all directions, so it's mainly about aerodynamic stress on the vehicle. Now it's just going to be all over the place. Mm, can it get itself back around? I doubt it, but it's close. You know, there's prograde. In principle, this is not how we want it to be. Um, let me allow for a lower pitch. Maybe that'll help. Generally, pointing at prograde is a better thing. Let's just let it go there, if possible. Now it's actually sort of pitched up the way it ought to be, but let's allow it to settle down if possible. 
We're passing over Mexico now. It's probably not safe for me to try to use any sort of cross range. I suppose we could probably land somewhere in Texas. Seems reasonable. Trying to manage pitch here, but it's tough. Here we go again through some heat effects. And of course, as I pitch up, it wants to go out of control. Obviously, our center of lift and center mass are in the wrong place. Oh, that was some serious G-forces. And if we did that lower in the atmosphere, firm airspace would probably rip us apart. But we're still fairly high in the atmosphere, thankfully. Yeah, uh, probably it means our center of mass is behind our center of lift right now, which shouldn't have happened. And it's a little bit weird, but... Probably some indicator was lying to me in the SPH then. I'm gonna try and stay over land. I suppose if we can, we should pump any fuel forward. That would be a good idea. Okay, would that help? Let's see. Let's have it pitch up. Try and pull this way a bit. Well, too bad I didn't put an airport at Houston. I should really do that. We've got them at Detroit, New York, and Washington, but definitely, and of course Edwards, and uh, up at Moffett Field. But I should obviously put one at Houston. That would be really helpful right about now. But I didn't. Maybe I should use, if this plane actually safely lands at Houston, I should do that. Use it as the focus for Kerbal Constructs. Why do I get the feeling we're going to need most of Houston as a landing strip? So yeah, we're right there. That is presumably Houston. Unless my geography is completely failing me. I'll just mock land on this highway over here. It does occur to me that the stall speed of this must be much lower now that it's 56 tons instead of 200 and... I mean, 300. We took off with almost 300. So... this might take a while. Let's lower the landing gear as a start. Apply the brakes beforehand. Mm, I don't see any untoward landscape. Seems to be okay. Gonna try and be gentle here. Well, we're on the ground and slowing down. Oh, there's some bumps in the ground. Well, I was not expecting to come back safely. And there were some issues with the way we came back, obviously through re-entry, but nevertheless Skylon has landed in the general vicinity of Houston. And here we are. Well, that's something, but it still isn't carrying the cargo it's supposed to carry, so I have some work to do. But uh, there you are, Skylon, SSTO space plane, uh, currently being worked on by reaction engines in the United Kingdom. So, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.